check out Rush Collectibles' awesome horror figures, including the first and only Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 figures. For more information, go to RushFigures.com. of discussing movies, the host will spoil lots. You've been warned. Listen to their screams. Greetings, ghouls and creeps, and welcome to Listen to Their Screams, a horror podcast that feels like you're chatting with friends. I am one of your friends, Dave. We're joined, as always, by our other friend, Ike. Ike, how are you? Hey, not doing too bad. Just, you know, living the dream. Uh, did my civic duty, went and voted. So that was fun. For my local elections, nothing nothing major. Oh, they're all major. Yeah, they are, they're to some degree. <laughs> they're all important. But, uh, all right, well, that's, uh, there you go. Always good to do your, your civic duty. That's right. Well, we're doing our civic duty, or at least our whatever screamtastic duty today as we are reviewing the movie alien romulus which is out in theaters now but before we get there we have lots and lots to chat about uh before we dive in too deep everybody be sure to check out the bonus episode that we just released uh featuring an interview with jason levy producer from fuzz on the lens productions uh, we talked to him about stream terrifier 3 much much more the interview is available in all of our usual podcast feeds Plus, there's a very special video version available on YouTube. Uh, so as as the, the uh, podcast episode that we're recording now releases, a stream will be in the midst of its uh, limited theatrical run. I think it's only out there for like five days. So uh, if you if you listen to this during that, uh, during that range, uh, go see it if you still can. Uh, we will be reviewing that movie next episode. Uh, speaking of special interviews, we also have a special interview coming up with Ethan Henry, who co-wrote and directed the upcoming movie Severance Mountain. Uh, that interview will be released on Sunday, September 8th, so stay tuned for that. So before we get too far into it, Ike, what did you watch this week? Uh, well, honestly, <coughs> like not like a crap ton. Uh, obviously, I watched Alien Romulus, uh, which the movie review today. I have also been, you know, watching some Supernatural, watching some Five Nights at Freddy's gameplay. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's probably about it. So pretty much the same as it was last week. <laughs> yeah, um, me too. I watched Alien Romulus, of course. I watched Supernatural, of course. Um, I did watch our cheesy slasher of the week this week, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and otherwise, horror related, I don't think I watched anything. Uh, nope, I think that was it. So, <laughs> all right, well, then let's move on uh, to our cheesy slasher of the week. Order up. Here's one house special cheesy slasher. Enjoy. And this episode, we are talking about the movie Rabid Grannies. Uh, this movie is described as two sweet little old ladies fall victim to an ancient curse that transforms them into bloodthirsty killers. Uh, the movie was released on in June 12th, 1989, written and directed by Emmanuel Curvin, starring Catherine Amire and Carolyn Breckman, uh, among others. The cast that recorded this movie was all they were all French speaking uh, and they struggled with lines because they tried to they tried to record it in English. They struggle with lines, often having to pronounce them phonetically. Uh, later, English actors overdubbed the dialogue, and uh, they had to follow the odd speech patterns. If you watch the movie, you can see that the there are times when the uh, yeah, it looks a little peculiar, uh, and, the, and the speech pattern is a little peculiar. Uh, the I couldn't find his name, but they, it says that the special effects creator in this for this movie was 18 years old, and uh, huh. there are, there are plenty of effects in it. There. Not the greatest in the world. They're pretty. They're decent. They're okay, uh, but there's there's quite a bit. But he's only 18 years old. Uh, despite the title of the movie, there are no rabies in the film, and the two women in it are actually part. There's a family in the in the film, and it, they're actually aunts to everybody. They're, they're not grandmas, so there there are no rabid grannies in this movie. I don't. I'm not sure. I guess rabid granny sounds a little catchier. I I don't know why they went that way. 
Uh, almost all of the cast and crew worked for free. Most of the crew members uh, were film students. But later, when the movie was actually released and uh, started making some money, they did sue the producer for pay, but they have never received any. Uh, <laughs> there were plans for a sequel, but due to the lawsuit, it never happened. Um, and I, I'm not I'm not sure what they would have done for a sequel of this, but that might be a, a bullet dodged. Uh, but the shooting for the movie took six consecutive weeks, and they sometimes filmed up to 17 hours a day. So it was a pretty strenuous yes. question. A lot uh, schedule. A lot of it was in a, a castle, and they said the castle had no heat or anything. And, and at that time, it was, it was very cold. It was apparently uh, a bit rough. But uh, often, low budget movies are they, they don't have the best circumstances. So uh, the movie is it's 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 cheesy. It's definitely cheesy. Definitely a little goofy. Uh, a little peculiar. And uh, if you would like to watch it, it is available to watch on Shudder now. So go check out uh, the Rabid Grannies, which are actually like demonic ants. They're they're not really Rabid Grannies. So uh, anyway, let's uh, move on to our next segment. Talk to us, Internet! And this is the new segment that we debuted last episode called Talk to Us Internet, where we uh, either pick up some feedback from a listener or just some uh, some discussion going online. That's something that we want to key in on. Uh, and this time I picked up on a it's a general discussion that uh, Stream, the movie we, we mentioned earlier that we're reviewing next week and the time this drops, we'll have just debuted. Uh, they're, 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 they're limited theatrical release is part of like an iconic events type thing, right? That's how a lot of these films get these theatrical releases. Like I said, it was only planned for five days, limited theaters. Uh, but there was a lot of chatter online from a lot of people that several of the showings were dropped that had been originally planned at some theaters. And I don't know what percentage. I don't know if it's a, a large chunk or not. I'm not sure how, you know, the the, the portion of it, per, excuse me, the uh, whatever I'm trying to say. Anyway, some of these joints have been dropped, and some people were alleging that it was due to some demand from bigger studios for more screens for high-profile movies. Not that th these bigger studios said, oh, drop stream, but just saying, oh, you know, you have to have it show it on X amount of screens, uh, so they had to drop some of the stream to meet that demand. Uh, so a lot of people were talking about, you know, it's just an, you know another challenge for independent films as they try to do, you know, get released and th do theatrical things. Uh, but a lot of people did talk about how it has reiterated the importance of the pre-sales for independent movies such as this. I have heard chatter that, I don't know, I don't know, I I don't know the basis. I've heard different, I heard different things online. I've heard things that if, you know, even if they sell one ticket to a showing, they cannot drop it. Uh, I've heard other people say if it's so much percent, they can't drop it. I don't know what it is. But I will tell you this, if I would almost guarantee that if a, a showing was sold out, they're probably not going to drop it. So. Uh, it's important that people get out and, and pre-buy their tickets for these kinds of things when possible uh, to support these. Like we said, you know, we, we talked about it with stream, you know, to go out and do that, support it, buy your tickets, go to multiple showings and uh, see if we can't get it prolonged, see if we can't get it out there a little longer, but, you know, and to avoid this kind of thing. So, so I, right, what do you think of all this? Again, I don't know, you know, what's what, what's hearsay, what's, I don't know how much. I do know there were some showings dropped. I know that for a fact. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know the reasoning. I don't know, you know, how much truth there is behind it. I don't know whether anything is, per, you know, proven. I It could just be, you know, it could just be low ticket sales for these showings. And they think, oh, throwing up another show, you know, another screen of Alien Romulus or whatever is going to make them more money. Um so, you know, I, I, in any case, it's not, it's not a good thing. Uh, you know, and I hate to see this. So what, what do you think? Well, I, I, I can say from personal experience that this is indeed happening. Um, so basically for, for, I'll, I'll spin a little yarn for you guys. Um, basically in the area that I'm in, we have two movie theaters. We have a kind of a bigger, more, um, I would say foot traffic theater. It's closer to like our mall. And we have another one that's all closer. Not, I don't want to say that much closer to where I am, but it's a little bit closer to where I am. And we generally go to the smaller theater, which is the one that's closer. Uh, the bigger theater 
it's just a little busier. So only one of our theaters got stream and the show times they, they I didn't think they'd put up all of them because we were waiting for them to pull up, put up all the show times because there's only like a handful. There's like one on Wednesday when the movie releases. There's like one on Friday, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. And they were at really went random and weird times. Really no rhyme or reason to it. So we were like, OK, well, let's just wait to see when the rest of the show times go up. Surely this is not all the show time. Surely they're just getting things worked. And believe it or not, we went and checked it today and the rest of their show times are up for the week. But they pulled down all the show times but one. So the only show time that I could possibly go to is going to be on Wednesday night. Yeah. And like I, I here's the thing. I get it to a degree that if they think that a movie is going to sell better, why they would want to pull that movie. But at the same time, I, I, I just feel like there has to be some sort of contractual obligation that they have to like having so many showings in a theater. Like, you know, that's the, and again, I could be wrong. I have no idea how this works behind the scenes, but like, I just feel like it's weird that they can just pull screenings of a film, despite the fact that presumably stream, you know, fuzz on the lens production, and everything else are, paying for a slot i would assume so it's just it's just weird to me that they can just be like yeah we're just going to pull these screenings so you only get basically because basically at the theater what i'm getting to is i only have one screening there's only one show time and it's wednesday at like uh i think like eight or nine p.m or something like that so it's just weird that that they can do that and that they are doing that you know again because i would presume that you know they they have some sort of con- contract in place, but I, I digress. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah. I mean, but the thing is, we don't you know we don't know the details of these agreements. Like we said, maybe, um, maybe you know some of the details in if if at, at least one ticket sold or at least so many tickets are sold, they can't drop it. Maybe that's where that's coming from. Maybe that's in the agreement, right? We will show this as long as X happens, right? Or whatever. Uh, if, if X, you know, if this doesn't happen by this date, we can drop. And also, we do know, right, that they're going through, like we said, this iconic event. So perhaps their agreement was with iconic events. We don't know what that, you know, what that means or what that, you know, consists of. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it's a very weird thing. I, you know, I hate seeing it um, because, you know, we're, we're big supporters, big fans of, of independent films in general. But really, you know, with the fuzz on the lens stuff, especially. Um, right. But again, if, you know, if, if, you know, this movie's got a lot of buzz, a lot of support online, you know, if, if, you know, if people were, are, you know, everybody's putting their money where their mouth is and actually going, you know, buying tickets, going to see it, whatever it may be, you know, you, you know, this, it could avoid all this, right? I mean, so, you know, it's, that's this is why we stress the importance of of seeing these movies and, and supporting these movies uh, because you know some of them that's the only thing they can fall back on right the only the only thing they can stand on is is what they're doing right how they're what they're producing because they don't have they don't have the clout to, to pull that right they you know if some other studio or production company where there was a, an an incident right and we've seen it in the past right you, it comes up where there's an issue with something. Well, this production company can say, well, look, if you don't do this, then we just won't, we won't release our future movies to your theater chain. And, um, that's a lot of times, you know, is, is, you know, not, they're not, that's not going to happen, right? They're not going to let that happen. Well, these, you know, independents, they don't have that, they don't have that kind of pull. They don't have that kind of club. They don't have anything to try to leverage or, or maneuver or negotiate with per se. Uh, so, right. you know, it, 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 so. Uh, they they rely pretty much solely on on fan support, so it's that's why it's important. And um, so you know, again, I you know I hate I hate to see that. I know it's you know it's probably impacting a lot of people, and you know it's obviously if it's affecting the choices of people to what they can see and where they can see it, and and uh, and who knows there might even maybe there's even locations that's dropped it completely. I don't I don't know. Um, you know, so it, that sucks, and uh, so we just need to. Uh, no, don't take anything for granted, right? Terrifier 3 is coming out. We know it's a big hype release this year. There's rumors that AMC is going to do a popcorn bucket and this, all this stuff, right? It's big, 
but if it doesn't if it doesn't draw then you know the next one's not gonna they're not gonna give it the same treatment just because uh so we gotta you know we gotta make sure that we support it for what the you know equivalent to the buzz so right. uh so do it so and um so th- that's that that's uh so that's the discussion for talk to us internet uh, again we're not you know we don't know what's all the details of what's what and everything, obviously. But bottom line, just just make sure you're supporting horror in theaters, yeah, and 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 on streaming services and physical media and in merchandise. Just just support, right? Just do what you can, uh, and, and and support. And uh, you know, with enough support, we can avoid some of these issues and some of these problems. So, all right, then let's move on. Generation gap. And this episode, we are going to do Generation Gap. Uh, because of the recent anniversary of the end movie events, which those occurred on August 18th, 1973, uh, the pre... Oh, I guess I should explain what this is a little bit. Uh, Generation Gap is where Ike, Ike was born in 95, right? 95? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just making sure right. for, for those listening. <laughs> um, so since there's an age difference between Ike and I, we use his birth year as a... Uh, as a dividing point, because you know, in his birth year, I was twenty years old, so that's a that's a good good you know good good stance. And uh, I either I pick a movie pre nineteen ninety five or Ike picks a movie post nineteen ninety five, and the other co host will uh, give a whatever a, a a counter movie from their period. So it doesn't you know how you know it's not like there's not like a lot of written rules here, right? It doesn't have to be like it's a scene for scene equivalent movie, but something has the same vibe, same flavor, same kind of a, kind of that same appeal that if you like one, you'll probably like the other. Um, so it's kind of an old versus new. That's why we call it a generation gap. Not a versus versus is not good because it's not a competition. It's just a, a just a comparison. Um, so anyway, like I said, the events in the in this movie occur August 18th, 1973, which was just recently. Uh, so. Or at least August 18th, the anniversary of it. So the pre-1995 movie that I am picking and presenting to Ike is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. Um, so Ike, do you have a post-1995 movie to uh, counter with? I sure do. All right. Well, lay it on us. Let's hear it. Yeah. So real quick, just a little, little clarification. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is what is considered to be a... Um, well, so it's a lot of things, but it falls <laughs> into the category of what's called as a grindhouse film. Mm-hmm. Um, grindhouse is defined by low budget, explicit content, sensational themes, and stylistic excess. So, basically, Texas Chainsaw Massacre has a lot of those, you know, unique properties. It's a very low budget, very explicit, very sensational film, and so it, I would say it definitely depicts a very early version of the grindhouse <laughs> style. And so looking at all of the different types of films that fall into this category, the one that to me seems the most like Texas Chainsaw from after 1995 would be House of a Thousand Corpses by Rob Zombie. Um, Now, obviously, you know, we have our problems with Mr. Zombie, but um, House of a Thousand Corpses is still a decent movie. Um, I would say that it fits the theme of a grindhouse film, but it is also very similar in concept to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, you know, with, with the kidnapping of like, you know, people on the road, having like a tourist trap to basically trap them and take them back to the house. I don't necessarily think that they eat the, them, I don't think, in, uh, in House of a Thousand Corpses, but they do like experiment on them and stuff and they do some weird shit. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that would be my comparison here. Oh, yeah, I think it, that's a, that's a pretty good choice. Um, yeah, we we are we're critical on Rob Zombie. We're not a big fan of most of stuff, but I do. I, this is probably probably my favorite Rob Zombie movie. So um, yeah, um, it, yeah. So if I had to pick one to watch, this this would be it. So uh, all right, well, good choice. There you have it. Pre nineteen ninety five Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, post nineteen ninety five House of a Thousand Corpses. So there you go. If you're looking for a, a generation gap double feature, we just laid it out for you. So uh, let us know what you think. So, all right, yeah. that takes care of all those segments, all the intros, and everything else. But we've got a lot more ahead. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive right back in. So, stick around. 
make sure you subscribe to listen to their screams on your favorite podcast platform. Also, make sure you look us up on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, TikTok, and Slasher. All you have to do is look up Listen to Screams. That is Listen, the number two in Screams, and you can find us there. Also, make sure you go and buy yourself a Listen to Their Screams t-shirt. You can find all of our shirts at tinyurl.com Screams Shirts. Spread the news. Spread the news. Spread the news. And welcome back with the news. Starting us off, we have some news about the original Nightmare on Elm Street. It's getting a 4K Ultra HD release digitally on October 1st with physical media release on October the 15th. So for those of you who are into the physical media, you know, especially the remasters and Ultra HD and all that good jazz, um, you're going to get your get your wishes, get your wishes here with Nightmare on Elm Street getting that remaster. Um, I know a lot of movies are, are slowly but surely getting that treatment. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for uh, for your, your your favorite movie to be remastered. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good deal. I, I will. uh I will. I will probably pick this up on physical media. Um, yeah. I. I don't. I don't have it in currently in my physical library. Uh, so this would be a. This would be a good copy to to pick up. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a good. A uh, good collector's item. Um, if I had to had to give a you know a, hey collect this type deal, but good stuff. And then of course it has been officially announced that Terrifier Three will make its world premiere as part of the Fantastic Fest in Austin. Uh, in case you didn't know, Austin is in Texas, Austin, Texas, and this is going to happen on September 21st. It has also been announced that the runtime is officially two hours and eight minutes. Um, I believe this is longer than both T1 and T2. Um, it, those it, are, it's about, I think it's about 10 minutes shorter than T2. Is it? Okay. Yeah. It's just slightly shorter. I think it's just a little bit shorter. Uh, not, not much. I mean, we're, we're talking. Just within 15 minutes, I believe. But, uh, yeah, definitely longer than T1 as well. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, but it's a, uh, you know, so basically, it's basically the, the uh, virtually the same as T2, just, you know, just a few minutes off. So I gotcha. Well, there you go. Um, obviously, we're both excited about this being premiered. Uh, but also, it's good to know the runtime. You know, uh, I know Dave in particular is sometimes critical of movies that um, are too long. Um, you know, he 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 is of the generation of ninety minute horror movies, if not shorter. So, you know, like a hundred hundred minute runtime max. So it, it it'll be interesting to see how they do with the uh, two hour and eight minutes of time. And uh, I'm very excited to see this. Obviously, we won't see it at the, on the twenty first, but uh, we'll see it the following month. Yeah, the uh, yeah, the, the two hour plus runtime does a phase before terrifying movie though. I'm <laughs> good. good. I'm I'm good. Uh, but you know, yeah, I oh, it'd be great. I'd love to be in Austin, but uh, you know, not gonna happen. So maybe maybe in the future we can make some of these debuts and things and get out there and do some of these things. But you know, not yet. Right. One day, or as the uh, uh what's that song? Um, uh, oh man. I just listened to it just the other day. It's the, it's the song Someday by The Strokes. Someday. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you Anywho. Go. Always had to sing during these, I guess. I yeah. just It's just how I do it. <laughs> but, uh, anywho. Reportedly, Crystal Lake, the Friday 13th prequel series, is back on track with some new blood. Wink, wink. Uh, Brad Caleb Kane is now brought on as the new showrunner. Kane recently was the co-showrunner for Welcome to Dairy, the It prequel. Um, so I, I would say that that's pretty good hands. Um, you know, having experience with an existing IP making a prequel, especially in television format, is a very unique situation. Um, so him having done it with da Welcome to Dairy um, might bode well. We've not seen Welcome to Dairy, so who knows if it's any good, but Assuming that it is, Crystal Lake is in good hands. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm just happy to see something, to to know that it's not not dead, um, and you know, it, it, I, I, you know, it's at least got forward movement. I mean, I again, this is not nothing official has been put out there yet. I don't guess, but 
Uh, all the major outlets are, have been reporting this. So uh, I, I think it's probably, probably all but confirmed. So uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can get some progress now and let's, let's get this thing made. I'm dying to see it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, it's crazy because it's, it's already been through so much in terms of like media presence, people stepping down, people stepping in. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Long Legs. Oh, I love that movie. The uh, mm -hmm. I can't stop quoting the scene where he's driving. He's like, <laughs> oh man, oh yeah. Anywho, <laughs> Long Legs recently passed a hundred million dollars at the box office, which makes it the highest grossing indie film, horror or otherwise, of twenty twenty four so far. Um. This is obviously great news. Not only is Long Legs a fantastic film, but the overarching creation uh, production house, I think it's called Neon, right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, they obviously made good movies prior to Long Legs, but including Long Legs. So it's good to see some success in this genre. Uh, maybe we'll see a Long Legs prequel or something one day. I feel like that'd be cool. Uh, or some other kind of IP in that realm. So but yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I mean, when a movie you know makes that much money, um, that's that's good for that independent production company, and uh, obviously uh, gives them lots of uh, lots of opportunities in the future. So it, it's cool that they, you know they made a great movie, uh, so it's it's cool that now they uh, they got a lot of a lot of creative options opened up financially speaking. Uh, so we get to see what, what they can do next. Yeah, no, 100%. And uh, maybe we'll see Nicolas Cage in another horror film sometime. Plus, yes, plus, yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's, don't, let's don't undermine that. I mean, yeah, good for Nick Cage. And, and uh, oh, who was the girl? I can't remember Mike, the girl. Micah Monroe. Yeah, 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 there you go. I mean, you know, great for them, too, because let's don't undermine their their place and, the, you know, the you know whatever the uh, the money this film made. I mean. You can have a great story, but without those two delivering the goods on screen, it's not going to get there. So uh, that that gives them some, you know, some clout, something to put in their cap of, hey, you know, look what we did. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, very good. And uh, I think that's it for our news this week. So we're going to move on to some upcoming birthdays. We have two very important ones, I would say. We have August 22nd, 1920, Ray Bradbury, author of Fahrenheit 451, Martian Chronicles, and Something Wicked This Way Comes. Um, I would say that Ray Bradbury, um, while maybe not exclusively or explicitly horror, does write some pretty daunting and um, haunting f things, such as Fahrenheit 451, which is a very, I would say, crucial um what is the word I'm looking for? Dialogue about society and, yeah. you know, the importance of reading and knowledge and everything else. So, yeah, I love Ray Bradbury, one of my favorite authors. And uh, yeah, he does. I mean, there's obviously a lot of sci fi ish to it, but yes, there's definitely some, some horror to it and uh, everything else. He's, he's a great, it was a great writer. So, yep. And I believe he, I, I, I would venture to guess that he has passed, if I remember correctly. Um, I, you know, I assume. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's pretty old. Be a hundred and four years old. So yeah, I, I gotta think. Yeah, he's gotta be. Come on, I mean. Yeah, he passed in two thousand and twelve at the age of ninety one. There you go. All right. Very good. Long life lived with a lot of creativity. So can't beat that. And then, of course, August twenty fifth, nineteen fifty eight, a man of many faces, Tim Burton. Batman, Batman Returns, Edward Scissorhands, Nightmare Before Christmas, and Beetlejuice, and many, 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 many more. Um, Tim Burton, I mean, what has Tim Burton not done is the better question. Um, but I will tell you this, Tim Burton makes 99% of his movies with two actors. Uh, that would be good old uh, Johnny Depp and uh, Helena Bonham Carter. If you gave a trivia question, what uh, Tim Burton film stars Helena Bonham Carter and uh, Johnny Depp, you'd have like at least 10, 10 options. I mean, come <laughs> on. Yeah, well, I love Tim Burton's movies, man. I mean, Edward, Edward Scissorhands and Beale Juice were two of my favorites. 
uh, when I was younger. Uh, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas is a modern classic. Uh, and then, you know, anybody that's listened knows, you know, dude, dude made my Batman. So, yeah. and uh, yeah, so love, love me some Tim Burton. And I don't know, I don't know what his, his involvement with the Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is. I don't know. I don't think he's, you know, directing or, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think he's a directly i mean i don't know if he has a you know a creative input in it i don't i don't i'm not sure um it looks like he's a producer there you go so based on what this is saying which could you know who knows what that means um whether you know whether he did have some creative ideas some input or whether it's just a uh because of his involvement with the first one you know just his name's on the movie uh but it doesn't matter uh obviously because of what he did with the first one is why we're getting the second one. So, true. Yeah. So, and we're his, looking, his, looking forward to that. I was gonna say his his very involvement in the film um, is just it's a very positive thing, a very positive sign, if you will. Yeah. But uh, that's it for birthdays. So not a whole lot this week in birthdays, but we have a few upcoming night uh, or not sorry night movie anniversaries. I started to read that first line. Hopefully, we have um, many it, upcoming nights. Because hopefully, hopefully, that was kind of ominous. <laughs> you have one upcoming night. <laughs> your, your your upcoming nights are numbered. Um, <laughs> that's a very ominous threat. Take that how you will. It's a very peculiar way to threaten someone, isn't it? Right. <laughs> it's I, it's weird. It's speaking of ominous threats. I heard a good one the other day. Um, it's it's it says the best way to to scare somebody and also concern them deeply is say, "I will shit your pants." <laughs> um that's uh that, that, that's gonna concern them they're gonna be thinking yeah. about how it is that you're gonna accomplish that so that's that's a good threat yeah yeah that, that'll leave them a little perplexed <laughs> anyway uh upcoming movie anniversaries august 22nd 1986 night of the creeps um i don't think that i have ever seen this movie so dave have you seen this movie yeah yeah it's it's pretty good it's a fun movie it's got uh yeah, tom atkins is in it uh, from Halloween three and uh, and other movies, but uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty fun movie. I, I advise anybody to go watch it. Gotcha. Yeah, I just looked it up. It seems like kind of like a zombie ish movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very good. We'll check it out sometime. I like the zombies. But uh, moving on to August twenty second, nineteen eighty six, the same day, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. Um. I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. It is, by and large, one of the uh, stupidest movies I've ever seen, but it is very funny and very uh, enjoyable, I would say. It, it is such a fun movie to watch. It is, it is one of those, those movies that I absolutely love so much because it's just, it's just fun and, and it's so hilarious. Uh, obviously not as good as the first, but I would push come shove. I think it's I think it's I think it's a funner movie to watch. More fun movie to watch. It's just it's it's super enjoyable. Yeah, I I think I would agree with that. It's one of those movies that do not take a lot of brain power to just watch. I mean, you can just sit there and just be like, turn your brain off and just enjoy some stupid slasher goodness. One hundred percent. Yeah, and I mean, and a lot of the things that people think of. When they think Texas Chainsaw Massacre are from this movie, yeah, and uh, you know it, it just—I mean, it just is. It just—I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of some, you know, the characters and different things and whatnot. Do they, they come from this? They don't come from the first. Uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of those things that have integrated themselves into pop culture and, and people's memories are actually from this. It's weird how that happens, how sequels sometimes have more relevance than the original. Not to say the original is not important, because it is, but you are correct. A lot of like the pop culture nods and some of the, you know, more prolific, I guess, memes, I guess you could say, are from yeah. this one. Yeah, and the, I mean, even merchandising and stuff, a lot of the figures yeah. and different things that comes from this. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm guessing after the success of the first, I'm seeing that this was in 1986 and it had, well, it had Dennis Hopper in it and things like that. And, I'm sure it had a bigger push and release behind it, oh, and sure. uh, and I'm sure it, you know I, I haven't looked, but I'm sure it did well. Um, so you know I, I'm, that's that's probably a big part of it. You know, it's just it's just out there more probably 
more people went to theaters and saw it and remember it. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, gosh, how many people probably was this the first one they saw? You know, I bet yeah. there was a substantial chunk of people that really, you know, hadn't seen the first one because, you know, a home video was not as prolific yet prior to 86. You know, not everybody had a VCR yet. And uh, and so, so, you know, there's there's probably a whole bunch of people that saw this was their first Massacre movie. Yeah, so absolutely. Well, there you have it. And then uh, moving on to our next film, also released on August 22nd, but uh, not on the same year. It's released many years later, 2023. The film Subject. Um, this is actually a film we reviewed, so it is in the archives. And um, I had to look this up to remind myself, but uh, I, I, I do remember this movie. It, it was actually very good. It's, um, it, it kind of, honestly, it, it was kind of released along with like a string of like, like, other movies that I remember from Screenbox, um, like the Creepy Pasta movie, was released around the same time. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, I remember I liked this. I remember I liked it pretty well. Yeah, I don't remember a lot of details about it, um, and I've not rewatched it since. Uh, so I was trying to see if I could see what we, what rating we gave it. Uh, let me see if I can. But yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember a lot of details. Uh. About this movie, yeah, it seems like was there a, was there a creature in it? Uh, we gave it a three and a half. So, yeah, if I remember correctly, it is a prisoner. He's on his way to jail, but the convoy gets stopped and it's intercepted by like a secretive government agency. Yeah, he, he has he has a way a way to get be. Doesn't he have a way to earn his freedom or something? Is that what it is? Is like instead of going to or not necessarily instead of going to prison, he he can watch this this thing. Or this subject, quote unquote, and uh, right, isn't that what it is? He sits that. Yeah, he like he like sits in her like his only job is to sit in her room and like watch a monitor all day. And like at first he doesn't see anything, but eventually he sees something. Yeah. So it it, it kind of makes you question like is he actually seeing something or is he going crazy or you know? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I do remember. It was yeah. It was a, it was a that was a pretty decent movie. And uh, so if, yeah, if whether well, you don't know you don't, you don't get hear a lot of talk about it. Uh, so. If, yeah, if any of the listeners have not seen it yet, then you're looking for something to watch. It's that's when you can go back and and pick up and, and watch. It's pretty decent. And if you want to hear our opinions on it first, then go back and find that episode. Yeah, one hundred percent. And then uh, moving right along to August twenty fifth, twenty sixteen. Don't breathe. Um, Don't breathe is a pretty decent uh, little little flick. It's you know nothing crazy, um, but it, it's definitely interesting. It's a disturbing too. It's a not 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 too not too shabby, but uh, it's definitely a little weird. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, is this is this the movie that we had at Wives Are Better about? Uh, no, that was, um, that was the movie by the guy who makes like Haunting of Hill House. Um, oh man, hmm. it, okay. it, that yeah, this one's the guy one with the blind guy who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I remember the movie, but I couldn't remember. I don't know why I was thinking this was, I don't know, confusing things. But yeah, I remember Don't Breathe. It was, it was all right. It wasn't, was that my favorite? Did they make it, wasn't there a Don't Breathe too? Yep, there sure was. Was it, uh, how direct from the first was it? Did it have a lot of the same people or was this kind of a leeching off the <laughs> the name kind of? If I remember correctly, Don't Breathe 2 has, it's like the same old guy, but like, it's essentially like an entirely new cast of people. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking that. I'm just, you know, could, I could, I've never seen the second one, so. Right. Yeah. But the movie you're thinking of is Hush. Hush, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, hey, it's similar. Don't in, Hush. In, in, in name. Hush. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which also, I fun remember. fact. The director of of Don't Breathe is Feed Alvarez, uh, mm-hmm. oh, who yeah. directed uh, Alien Romulus. Uh, yeah, so. I did. Yeah, did not even didn't even think about that. But there you go. All kinds of connections today. Yes, yes, indeed. Or at least but, uh, one connection today. I don't know if there's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe more. Maybe more. We don't know. We don't know yet. Yeah, Heck this yeah. is this is for you at home to play along. That's right. Yeah, you guys got to find the other connections. It's like a little Easter egg. What's right. that? What's that blue? You found a clue, <laughs> right? We just got a letter. Wonder who it's from. <laughs> All right, 
Enough singing. We do too much of that. It's gonna be from Nickelodeon. It really right. We're we're gonna get the we're gonna get the letter from Nickelodeon. Oh, <laughs> cease and desist. <laughs> Dave, we just got a letter. We just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. Oh no, it's a cease and desist letter from the Nickelodeon Corporation. Dude, dude I have to, I have to say I know it doesn't fit into anything any format of anything I do, but I would absolutely love somebody to interview Steve Burns. Oh yeah, absolutely. Such seems like such a cool dude, such a good guy. He he's uh, on TikTok. He like posts yeah, yeah. like in, I, I love immediate it. like inspirational so, messages. Yes, it's they so cool. It's because it's like he's talking to you, you know, and he's like. It's it's at first it's kind of it's weird like oh how are you and he sits there like he's listening to you like oh what's happening here I've seen, I've seen some of those but you're like think, hey what, what what are you doing there boss <laughs> I think we ought to do that but put a screen twist on it but you know right do it do it in a creepy way okay <laughs> never mind uh, we got sidetracked <laughs> somehow I had I don't know how we went from don't breathe to getting sidetracked to blue schools. Yeah, I, I don't know. We 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 we're talking about Texas Chainsaw. We're talking about Don't Breathe, Feed Alvarez, I mean, Connections. Natural, just a natural flow of thoughts, right? I mean, everybody has. Everybody has. If it, if if I guess if anybody out there has the weird conglomeration of of loves and interests that I do, that doesn't surprise you know because if you scroll through my social media posts, you know you can it goes everything from horror movies to baseball to Motorhead to Bluey to. Sesame Street. To, <laughs> I mean, I love so many different things that it's 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 a that it's it's a weird little stew in my head. Yeah, no, I feel that good old stew, a little bit of geek stew, if you will. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right, let's bring it back. Yeah, I say we'll we'll bring it back from the season desist from Nickelodeon. <laughs> um, I just yeah. be, I just be honored to hear from Nickelodeon. I, I would too. If, if I got a season assist from Nickelodeon, like I would be like a little mad, but at the same time, I'd be like, well, they've acknowledged me. So I guarantee you that <laughs> that bitch is framed on, gonna be framed on the wall. Oh, 100%. I can't remember who it was. There's actually a TikToker I have, I, I watch, not a TikToker, a YouTuber I watch who got a season assist letter from Disney. So oh. <laughs> and he has that frame. But to be fair, it doesn't take much to get one from Disney. You nah. just gotta, you just gotta mention something to some property of theirs and they get mad. <laughs> yeah. See, I said Disney, so they're probably gonna get mad at me for saying their name. Woohoo! Make sure you send us two copies. Right. <laughs> Listen, the Disney secret police are gonna come and murder me. <laughs> All right. And, well, and, and then my and then my wife won't be able to sue them because we signed the arbitration clause because we signed up for Disney Plus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, in oh, a, and in forthcoming news, apparently, I'll be looking for a new co-host next episode. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I kid, I kid. But hey, that that that's that's modern events there, folks. That's social commentary. That's what you sign up for when you come and watch it. I don't know about that, but that's what they get. <laughs> that's right. I don't hey. know if they're signing up for it, but, <laughs> but damn it, that's what you're getting. Amen, brother. All right. So anyway. wait a minute. What's this podcast about anyway? Oh, it's yeah, right. <laughs> about, about horror movies, right? Okay, do it. We're, we're we're talking about the Disney secret. We 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 went deep. We got to the Disney secret police. That that's how you know we got deep. Look, look, I love Disney. I love so much about Disney, right? So many of their movies, properties, whatever else. But there's truly some horrific things about Disney that would completely fit into a podcast like this. So, oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I'm just waiting for the like. Um, <laughs> I'm just waiting for like like a like a like you hear the like a gun cocking like a <laughs> that, hear that clicky noise in our connection <laughs> that used, to, that used to be the the movie signal that your lines tapped. Here you go, here you go, ready? Dude, they, they, they somehow <laughs> somehow tapped into our live recording, <laughs> right? And they're they're just, they're just like I am not reading from a script. Disney is not forcing me to say this. <laughs> I kid. We better stop. We're gonna get. Her. They might come after us now. So here's the here's the thing, right? I mean, <laughs> we we can do all this, but no one may. They may not hear it because come Thursday, when actually maybe drop <laughs> is a dramatic rendition of the original script of Bambi, Bambi or something. That's just, right. <laughs> that's gonna show up in the place of a. Good of a of that. So that's oh, okay, yeah, Disney. Yeah. If you if you want to give us a problem, we can, let's have a discussion. We're talking about Song of the South. <laughs> right, I was gonna say. I was gonna say, guys. Song of the South is uh is uh where's uh where's Walt Disney's head? Is his head still frozen somewhere? Yeah. 
Okay. You know the conspiracy theory that they the reason they released Frozen was so that way when you Google Walt Disney Frozen, news about Walt <laughs> Disney's head doesn't come up. Oh, that's classic. All right, I, it makes sense to me. <laughs> I kid. That sounds oh. like fact. Right. Hey, it's on the internet, right? Not kid. Um, we better All move right. on Woo. before we get too far off track here. The train's derailed. Need to get back on. Hopefully, hopefully the listeners are still with us. Yeah, right. Through all that hey, Disney talk. Hey, hey, and you know what's the funny thing about all of this, right? We have talked in the past about sometimes when I get rambling or get this and that, I've had a, an adult beverage or whatever. Maybe I've had none today. So <laughs> this is this is absolutely one hundred percent sober day right now. That's this having these all discussions. natural. <laughs> so that if that ain't gonna stick in your head and fucking rot, I don't know what will. Right. <laughs> Welcome um, to Monica's world. All uh, right. <laughs> all right. Let's go. We what we got? We're up to we upcoming got, releases, right? Yeah, we got three upcoming releases. What the we hell's coming up besides that Disney Assassin? <laughs> right. <laughs> Other than our impending doom by the uh, definitely not staged deaths, um, the movie we mentioned earlier, Severance Mountain, will be coming to video on demand on Friday, September thirteenth. It is a. Uh, I'm sorry. It is described as. After a tragic loss, two friends reunite for a camping trip. But when police discover a dead body on the mountain, they fear an unknown killer may be hunting unsuspecting tourists. Once again, we do have an interview with co-writer and director Ethan Henry releasing on September 8th. So this will be released ahead of the September 13th release uh, with some nice little juicy details for all you wonderful folks out there. So. Yeah. Uh, make sure you are keeping a lookout for that and a lookout for the movie on video on demand. Yeah, I was already, you know, hey, I was already intrigued by this by seeing the trailer and everything, you know, hearing about it. But after talking to Ethan, man, I'm, I'm super pumped. I can't wait to see this thing. Uh, it, man, it, Ethan was, a, was such a cool dude. Uh, and we say it every, with every one of these interviews, but this one, probably more than any, you got to watch the video version, man. Just to, yeah. cause, cause I don't know, man. Ethan, was in his tattoo shop and just, it was so cool. And yeah. it was just, just, it was killer. And, uh, it was, it was super fun. It was a super fun talk without giving away any spoilers for the movie. Uh, but it does give you the vibe, the gist, the mindset behind it. And, uh, man, I, 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 I love Ethan's, I love his train of thought as a, as a filmmaker and that, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and also not to mention, this is a very fun interview because, we got to interview someone before we saw the movie. So we didn't have anything really to talk about with the movie. We just got to kind of talk about his creative process and everything else. So it was a little bit of a different interview than what we normally do. So yeah. Um, yeah, definitely check it out. Like you said, the, the video is great. You know, e Ethan Henry, he's a, he's a very unique guy too, because he's got a big old beard and he had the yeah. Severance mountain t-shirt on. He's, he's wild, man. He's a, he fucking in a, he's in a metal band. Yeah. He, uh, he's, he owns a tattoo parlor. He, he skates. I've, I've seen the online videos of him skate. I mean, what a fun dude, man. <laughs> and, um, I mean, that's, but that's, that's, man, isn't that us? Isn't that horror? I mean, that's what we are, right? I mean, yeah. We just, we don't give a shit about anything, man. We just, we just have a good time, right? We just want to have fun and enjoy things. And, uh, I think, man, I think that's why horror is just the best community. And, um, Ethan's just a, a prime example of that. And, uh, and again, we say it, man, at the top of every show, our podcast, man, we pride on, you know, it just feels like you're sitting down chatting movies with some friends. And, and everything else. And right when we get sidetracked, and all, that's what happens when you talk. And um, and it's the same with our interviews, right? Yeah, we're talking to them and we're asking them questions, uh, you know, directed questions about their projects and this and that. But, you know, I think we do a pretty good job of picking up when something, you know, we can go off script a little bit and something's interesting and, and uh, you know, and, and feeding back because, you know, everybody we've interviewed, man, we've really hit it off well with. And I, I do feel like, I mean, we just met them all. But it does feel like talking to a friend, and it's um, and it's because it's that instant, that instant vibe, that instant click with the love of horror, man. You just feel like you've known them forever, and uh, you can instantly have this you know fun conversation with them. So, um, yeah. so I that's my rousing endorsement that people need to make sure don't don't sleep on our interviews. Uh, they're they're a lot of fun. I know you maybe you're here for the goofy ass reviews and news, and, uh, and I'm, I'm glad you enjoy all that, but. I hope nobody skips the interviews because they're they're a lot of fun and it's a whole different aspect the side of, of our show that we get to do 
and uh, and throw out there. And, and hell, it's bonus content, man. Was, we're giving you extra. So, but uh, they're a blast. I love doing them. I love talking to people, uh, you know, that I have you know share passions with, and it's uh, it's so cool. And we've got more coming in the future, right? We've we got a lot of people we're talking to about doing them. Uh, you know, a few that were pretty much scheduled to do and. And more, you know, some interest out there. there there's going to be a lot of these coming up in the future. And the cool thing with them is there's, there's no pressure, right? We don't, we do this. We do a review every week. But the interviews are just like, man, when, when it comes up, we do them. There's a, so it's, it's very, uh, it's very organic. And, it, and it's, it's really fun. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, moving on, we have Hellhole coming to Shutter on August 23rd. And it <laughs> Hellhole, describes- <laughs> the description for this episode of the Flips of the Screams. <laughs> for real though. <laughs> oh, Lord. But uh, it looks like it is described as an American-led fracking crew and covers a French soldier frozen in time from a Napoleonic campaign whose body hosts a parasitic monster. Um, this sounds like Captain America meets the thing. So, um, well, I guess it's Captain France meets the thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'll check this out. <laughs> I, I, I like the concept of a parasite, parasitic monster being frozen inside of the body of a French soldier. It sounds like an interesting time. Yeah, I, I love the. I just love the word fracking, and it's it's just such a. Such, I mean, my mine is completely off because it's it is also a, a word that was in Battlestar Galactica, and it was kind of frack was kind of a substitution for fuck, and it was it was a, a kind of a curse word, and, and so that's what I always always thought. So anytime I hear fracking, I'm like a 13 year old kid kind of chuckling, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so but uh, yeah, this sounds intriguing. And um, I it I like it. I mean, it sounds original, right? I mean, it's it's not. It doesn't sound like a carbon copy of of other you know another horror movie recently, right? So it's a little a little different. So yeah, we've seen parasitic monsters. Hell, we're gonna fucking talk about them today. <laughs> I know review today pretty much or uh, well, I don't know if they're parasites. But you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, <laughs> but it's you know yeah we've seen you know frozen soldiers and blah blah blah, but. Uh, there's a lot of room to do something there, so we'll, we'll see. But, uh, I'll give it a watch. Sounds fun. Yeah. Always give a good watch to a Shutter movie. And uh, lastly, The Funeral comes to Screambox on August 27th. The Turkish movie is described as a... Oh, it's a That's semel. A semel. Oh, semel uh, yeah, drives a... <laughs> semel drives a hearse for a... For a living, he's entrusted with secretly carrying the body of a young girl at the request of her family. One night, he hears strange groans from the back of the truck, even though the girl hasn't got a pulse. So this looks like a, an interesting film. I, I like the idea of uh, foreign films. You know, generally, they, they usually produce some good stuff. But also, it's an interesting concept. Love the idea of it being either like a ghost, a monster, or a zombie, potentially. So I'll check yeah, it out. I, I think it's, I, well, I think it's, the descriptions call it a slow burn take on the zombie genre. So I think they're, it's leaning towards zombie. But uh, but who knows, right? Who knows when we, until we get into it, what they really, what they really do. So yeah, it sounds, it sounds pretty fun. It sounds pretty cool. Uh, I have to, once again, chuckle at the fact that the last two movies we mentioned are Hail Hole and The Funeral. Both of which can be very descriptive terms for today's episode of Listen to the Scripts. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know why I'm on that. I'm just beating a dead horse now. I, All right. It happens. <laughs> you beat that horse until it's dead. That's, that's, see, that's what we do. see, this is why I drink before we record, typically, because I think it calms <laughs> me down. <laughs> Most people get worse when they drink. I think, I, think it, I think it improves me. You're like, drinking mills me out, man. <laughs> That that it does. I, I don't get drunk. I just get nice and mellow and calm. I was I, I usually I just, I get sleepy. It makes me tired. I do too. If I drink, <laughs> yeah, if I drink enough, I do. I I do too. I get very. It definitely relaxes me. So, anyway, let's don't get too far off track yet right. again. But uh, yeah, I think that pretty much does. It. I think that's all of our you know news, birthdays, anniversaries, and upcoming releases. Um, as always, this is the perfect time for you guys to take a moment and follow us on social media. I know that we get a little off track sometimes, but on social media, we very rarely do. We just post our stuff and we go about our time. We like to, you know, interact with you guys as well and, uh, you know, make sure you guys are kept up to date on anything that's coming out. And sometimes, you know, we talk about news on the show. Sometimes that news breaks before the show, you know, and we like to talk about it online before then. So best way to stay in the loop. False on social media. 
Um, when we come back, we will have our official review of this week's film, Alien Romulus. Stick around. This is Wrestling Nostalgia, the podcast that dives into wrestling history. Hey, wrestling fans, I'm Dave Dynasty. And if you enjoy podcasts that are knowledgeable and history-driven, then Wrestling Nostalgia is for you. With great guests and fun interviews, there are over 200 episodes in our archives. We chat with several first-time guests and often cover topics not discussed on other podcasts. Look up Wrestling Nostalgia on your favorite podcast platform and visit all of our links at linktree slash wrestlepod. That is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash R-A-S-S-L-E-P-O-D. And remember, wherever you go, whatever you do, be good, be safe, and keep on growing. All right. Welcome back to Listen to the Screams. It is review time, and we are reviewing Alien Romulus. Uh, the movie was released August 16th into theaters. It grossed $41.5 million domestically on its opening weekend to land in the number one spot. Uh, it was movie was written by uh, Fede Alvarez and Rodo Segus. Uh, Se I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. Directed by Fede Alvarez, starring Kaylee Spaney, David Johnson, Archie Renault, and others. Uh, as we mentioned last episode, this is the seventh installment in the Alien franchise, and this movie is set between the events of 1979's Alien and 1986's Aliens. And um, I, I want to start right off the bat by saying this movie definitely, stylistically, to me, did it fit right in there between those two. I think they did a really good job mm -hmm. uh, of getting that vibe, that look, that style, uh, making it you know feel like it's it, that's where it should be set. Uh, so kudos to them. Um, I did have a point I wanted to talk about, but I, for the sake of not being too spoilery, I, I'm going to, I'm not going to, after all, I have, I have second thoughts. Um, I will say it was very cool to see um, a familiar face in the movie. And uh, that's, that's, I'll leave it at that. So I'm not going to talk about it. I, I thought about, you know, I had all these plans to talk about it because it was so cool. And I thought, oh no, you're just, you're giving away a lot of stuff there. So uh, anyway, familiar face in the movie. Very cool. Glad to see it. Like how they utilized it. Uh, and everything else, um, I you know I enjoyed the movie. We 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 laughed earlier about the length of movies. I think this movie, whew, I think it could have been trimmed down a little. Yeah. Um, I think it was a little long. And I and I, cause I do think there was a, a lot of non-productive time. Not a lot, but there was enough some non-productive time that could have been trimmed out. Uh, when I when it first started in the early parts, I did think, God, this is just kind of plodding. Um, and I'm like, God, get to it, get to it. But it did very much pick up and the pace picked up and it, and it got fun. Uh, you know, the, the xenomorphs, the face huggers, all that was, was cool. It was, you know, cool to see. Uh, I don't feel like that they really, uh, you know, I don't feel like they did anything super revolutionary for the franchise. I feel like they, 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 they stayed in line with what's there and everything else. The, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, again, I have, I have one gripe about one line in the movie that I, I'm not, again, I'm not going to say because it's, kinda, it's, I don't know, it's, it's not really spoiler. It doesn't give away a plot, but, uh, I didn't really like him using this line just, just because of the, uh, the importance in the franchise. But, uh, we'll discuss that at another point. But, um, you know, I thought, I thought the movie was okay. Uh, again, I thought, it, I thought it was a little long and I don't think that's just me. You know, kind of being the old man there, you know, shouting at clouds. I, I just think, I think there was a lot of uh, unproductive time in the movie that really didn't need to be in there. Um, I, w I was super excited to see it. It didn't really, you know, it didn't disappoint me too much, but it it didn't blow me away as much as I hoped. Um, again, it, I just don't, I don't know. It didn't really have anything super creative about it that just set it out as this, Super spectacular entry into the franchise for me. It was it was a fun movie. It was an enjoyable movie. A beautiful movie, but the, I just didn't I, I didn't feel blown away by it, which is what I had hoped for something this. But um, it's definitely a movie that you know, if I'm rewatching the franchise, it's not like I'm gonna be disgruntled and and, and you know kick dirt because I'm unhappy about where you're watching it. So, uh, but again, it just left me a little underwhelmed. Uh, but given the, <laughs> given my expectations for it, I don't know that it, I don't know that it could not have. I mean, I really was I was just so stoked for, to see it 
and it had high hopes. So, uh, I, what did you think of Alien Romulus? Well, you know, I'll say first and foremost, I, I did enjoy it. Just as a general statement, I, I thought that, you know, it was a pretty decent film. Um, like you said, the stylization of the film very much fitted into the time period of the in between the first two movies. Um, before I get too far on that track, I do want to just drop a small note that, you know, going in this movie, I talked to Kayla because she, she, I mean, she's seen Alien, but it's been a long time. Um, and, and the only other Alien movie I think she's seen purposefully was Prometheus. Um, and so I, I, she was like, you know, wh- where does this movie fall, like, in the timeline? You know, what do I need to watch before this movie? And I was like, realistically, I said, as long as you've seen Alien, you know, you should be fine, um, is kind of what I thought. And so, you know, she she made sure that she had the knowledge of Alien. Um, but there were some nods in this film to uh, Prometheus and subsequently Alien Covenant as well. Um, yeah. Which was cool. But uh, in, in any case, you know, it, this is very interesting that, like, we kind of have, like, this... Um, this running tab of like, you need to watch these movies before you watch this movie. And then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, movie was good. Uh, like you said, I did think it was a little too long. It, um, you know, for those of us who are wrestling fans, this had a lot of false finishes. Um, you know, there's only so many times you can hit the stone cold stunner before it gets boring. And that's kind of how this movie felt. Um, it's like, you thought that they had finished the movie stone cold stunner. And then you're like, okay, great. Oh wait, no, no, no. We're back. Stone cold stunner. <laughs> we're, we're done. Okay, great. Third time around, it's still close. It's okay. Yeah, it, it just kept happening. And I felt like they were trying to drag the movie out longer than they needed it to. Um, one of the are, are we sure that uh, are we sh- are we sure Rob Zombie didn't direct it? Right, right, for real though. You're oh no, 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 wait. What's her name? Or, or, what's her name? Wasn't in it. Yeah. What's what's her name? Oh, Moon, uh, Moon, Moon Zombie. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever her name is, she wasn't in it that we know of. So right. <laughs> but <laughs> unless, you know, unless she played a xenomorph. True. True. She could have. But, you know, it, other than the length and I, I I think I know what phrase you're referencing, like like it was a nod to one of the other movies. Um, I do think it was fan service, but yeah. I, 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 I liked it personally. I thought it was funny. Um, but, you know, I, I like the concept of the film. I like the characters um, as most of the alien movies do. They do deal with at least like one synthetic organism. Um, which in this case is the character, what's his name? Um, Andy. Yeah. And, uh, Andy was a cool character. It was very interesting to kind of see a more, um, human and innocent, uh, synthetic in an alien franchise. Uh, just cause, you know, historically the synthetics have not been very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> very nice yeah, people. Yeah. Um, they've usually been very much, uh, you know, for instance, uh, I, I can't remember the guy who plays them, but the synthetic and uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant um, are, are, are both. I, I would say that generally speaking, they're evil because of the actions. Um, but yeah, I mean, outside well, of, of, the, of of course, the synthetic in the first one was right. You know, but, uh, ba- basically, because the mission prior, uh, what was his name? Mm-hmm. Rook? Was that right in the first one? No, he was Ash in the first one. Uh, which one was Ash? Was Rook in the second one, Aliens? <laughs> no, Rook was in this one. Oh, Rook. shit. Yeah, you're... You're, you're, uh, the, you're, my giving bad. Away, you're giving away the spoiler that I didn't want to give away. <laughs> oh, damn, my bad. My bad, guys. That's my bad. Um. Well, okay, so was Ash in the original one, right? He was the first chest burst, right? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So okay, <laughs> my bad, my bad. It was my yeah. After the first one, played by Ann Holmes, was the, the synthetic. But in the first movie, we you, you, we don't know he's a synthetic through much of the movie. Right, that's right. Because he kind of goes and talks to mother, mm-hmm. and he's like talking about like, oh yeah, you know, this is that, and then they don't really know that like he's turning against him quite yet until the end, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Well, my my bad guys, my bad. But uh-uh. to, be, to be fair, you you know pretty much right away as soon as because I recognized the the body of the synthetic as soon as it started, so you'll it, recognize it pretty uh, much right. Away. And it all occurs pretty early in the movie, so it, it does. It, it I would say it's pretty inconsequential for the grand scheme of things, but 
That is my bad. But to be fair, when you start watching this, you do know that we're going to possibly spoil the movie. So, <laughs> yeah, we give the warnings, but we, we just we, <laughs> we we try to avoid some. But right but again, that doesn't. I mean, that's that does not give away any huge plot aspect of the movie. Oh no, anything, so nothing crazy. But one thing I will add to this that I didn't really like, and I and I won't spoil it entirely, but obviously with most of the alien movies, um, there's always some kind of like twist, right? And the twist of this movie I liked, but it felt reminiscent of another Alien movie where they kind of did a similar thing. I think, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, Dave. Um, specifically, I believe it's Alien Resurrection, the fourth one. Um, oh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen that one, and I've probably only seen it once. Um, right. So it, did it, it had a similar twist to it, do you think? Um, let me just say that the twist... And I'll say it very broadly and vaguely, so that way it doesn't potentially ruin anything. Um, the concept of a xenomorph human hybrid yeah. ha- has been explored in other films and was potentially explored in this film, gotcha. is what I'm getting at. Um, so I, I don't necessarily like the treading of old ground in that regard, but at the same time, you know, it, it did kind of seem like a logical conclusion to some degree. Um, but what I what I think really set this movie apart was the tone and the the way that they the stylization of the movie. It seems sort of like that old space trucker kind of vibe where you know they're working in the mines and like their their technology seems futuristic but also old at the same time. Yeah. So I, I think they did a good job in it, that regard. Yeah, it kind of had the Firefly feel, right? It did. Yeah. But yeah, so I would say that's my pri- my primary beef is would be the reoccurring themes and then the length and the just repeated like, oh, we're going to finish now. No, we're not. We're going to finish now. And just oh, I was like, come on, man. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, and I think, yeah, I think those kind of, the, you know, if you put all that together, it's kind of why I felt a little underwhelmed. Uh, I, I just I guess I was I don't know. I don't know what I. I guess I hoped for a little more originality in it. And I don't know, I guess I don't know why I thought that when it was placed between two existing movies. Right. Um, I don't know. I think it's maybe it's because, you know, we've had a decent run of these, uh, these prequel type movies here recently who have, have really been creative uh, in, in how they're approached and in, in, in how they do things where it's not just, Oh, we, we, you know, where you're going to wind up. So it's just blah to get there. They, they really, Make it intriguing, make it interesting. So I guess maybe I was hoping for a, a bit more time in here, and and there, I mean, you know, there was a little bit, but uh, I th- I don't know. I think I'd, I, you know, I enjoyed the movie, but I think overall, um, I was a little underwhelmed. Uh, and again, some of that may purely just be because I did have really high expectations because I do love the Alien franchise. So, um, so all right then. Well, let's uh, let's rate this sucker. Uh, you know. Uh, I think I'm going to have to just give it a, a, just a three out of five. I don't think there's enough here for me to bump it up anymore. It's kind of a middle. I did enjoy it. I would rewatch it, but I just don't feel like there's quite enough for me to say, yeah, I, I really, really liked it. Um, given some of the movies recently, I've given three and a half to, I just, I just think, I just think this is just a, 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 a touch below those. So I'm giving it just a middle of the old ground, three out of five screams for me. So Ike, what are you rating it? You know, I, so to provide some clarity, because I, I do like this movie a lot. I, I do think it is. So I, to kind of put into perspective on like some of the other movies, like for instance, like Prometheus, I would give Prometheus probably a four because I think Prometheus is really good. Alien, I'd probably give like a four and a half because Alien is just pretty, I mean, it, it's pretty incredible film. I mean, it, it is revolutionary in almost every way. You know, I really like Aliens. I really like, you know, uh, Alien Covenant. Uh, Alien Covenant, not as so much. So, like, in comparison to the other films and where I kind of gauge my likingness of this film, I do think I would put this at, like, a three and a half for myself. Just because, like, for instance, Alien Covenant, I would give Alien Covenant a three. But, like, I like this movie more than I liked Alien Covenant. So, I, I would logically put this out about a three and a half. All right. Well, there you go. So, a 
Average of three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Uh, screams from us. That is Alien Romulus. Uh, obviously doing big numbers in the box office. Let's see what it does on its second weekend. I suspect it'll still be trucking along. So if you've not seen it, go and check it out while it's still in theaters. It's definitely it's definitely a movie that you know it's fun to watch in the theater, right? It's that big space movie that, you know, those are the kind of movies that are that are best in theaters to watch. Uh, as opposed to at home. Not saying that you know that can't be enjoyable at home, especially with modern systems and whatnot. But yeah, you know, these are these are the movies made for the theater. So all right, like we said earlier, next week we are going to review Stream, uh, which has a limited theater run that began on August 21st. So depending on when you're listening to this, if it's not over yet, like I said, we think it's out there for five days, depending on your area. Uh check it out. Uh and see if you can still see it. You can go to tinyurl.com slash stream tickets to see if those are still available. Uh, if you're outside that window, then, oh, too bad. And uh, I would venture to guess this will probably get released on video on demand or to uh, perhaps to uh, Screenbox fairly quickly, though. Uh, I assume this is still kind of their partnering with Screenbox uh, like they do with the Terrifier movies. Uh, but we'll see. So uh, anyway, next episode, we'll be reviewing Stream. But before we get there, we'd like to say thank you to our wives and all of you listeners and followers for all your support and your interactions and uh, making it enjoyable for us to get on here and bullshit and ramble and talk about Disney and Nickelodeon and horror movies <laughs> and whatever else that we want to talk about. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed that. So I, before we close and get out of here, anything else you want to add? Uh, you know, just uh, well, uh, definitely not on topic, but, you know, guys, um, two things. First and foremost, if you vote, vote. Do it now um, if it's your time to do so. And then in November, make sure you vote. Uh, you know, it's your civic duty and, you know, just you want to make sure that your voice is heard. So I like to encourage people to do that. Also, um, if uh, you happen to die at the hands of Disney, make sure you didn't sign the arbitration clause by joining Disney <laughs> Plus or any of their other uh, platforms because apparently you can go to their parks potentially die and you can't sue them if they did something wrong so i guess that's up to you that's up to you folks yeah if you die at the hands of disney because you listen to our podcast then oops our bad we're sorry yeah. by uh, listening to this podcast you agree to the non-arbitration clause <laughs> <laughs> your survivors will not hold us accountable correct for, for anything that happens to you uh, and you also cannot hold us accountable for any nauseated feelings you have after listening to us. Uh, Absolutely. Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, it is time. I'm super excited about stream. Guys, if it's like I said, if you can still go see it, go, as they say, join the stream. Go go watch it. Uh, if not, then uh, when it comes out, even if you didn't go see it, when it comes out, you know, video on demand or digitally or streaming, however it comes out. Make sure you support it then. As you do all these movies, we've talked about it earlier, support all the horror movies. Uh, if you've not seen Alien Romulus, go hit the theater and watch it. Uh, but until next week, wherever you go and wherever you do, be good, be safe, and always have many pleasant nightmares.